Earlier today, the USDA released its November crop report. Elaine Cub joins us now to discuss it. As you look at the numbers, it's forecasting uh, U.S. corn yield for this year just less than 14 billion bushels and soybean yield at just less than 3.26 or just around 3.26 billion bushels. Uh, they did it by lowering the acreage and increasing the yield. Overall, any surprises for you today, Elaine? No, you know, this wasn't a terribly surprising report. I think folks going into it expected them to raise the yields and expected them to raise the ending stocks. And in fact, those ending stocks numbers did come in pretty much exactly where the average guess was. So it's hard to call it a bullish report. You would call this sort of a neutral report or even possibly bearish with the thought that we've got more coming into the, the supply than we previously had in the, in the government numbers. Um, nevertheless, the market has responded bullishly to the report. Why is that, do you think? I think, particularly in the case in soybeans, where you're seeing the market going up more than 20 cents at various points in time here, and it went up right away after the report, I think that traders going into it were expecting it to be a very bearish report, more bearish than it came out to be, and uh, you're probably having some short covering going on. Um, so if it lasts more than just today, you know, uh, I would be surprised. I'm thinking that we're just kind of seeing a one day short covering thing going on. And I think that we'll see the soybean market continue to experience resistance above $13. You know, it has really struggled to find any traction above that level in the past couple of months. But on the other hand, some of the things that they did change on the soybean table were the demand. For instance, the crushing number went up, the export number went way up. They increased that 6% since their September number. So you really are looking at, as we already knew, a, a very bullish demand situation for soybeans. You know, people are the world globally, people need these soybeans. Um, so there is some reason that perhaps this won't just be a one day thing. At this point, I'm still thinking it will, particularly when you look at the fact that over the next several months, um, six months down the road, we'll be looking at these large South American supplies coming on. And it's really probably not as bullish as the today's reaction seemed to be. Yeah, beans especially took off more than corn in the markets. But uh, corn, you would think looking at that ending stocks number that was below the average trade guess, that it would have been hurt a little bit more than that, no? Yeah, and, and, and the market is going up by a few cents. Mm -hmm. um, I think that perhaps if anybody was surprised by anything, it was the cut in acres. They cut planted and harvested acres about 2 million. So that's a fairly large chunk. Um, and there also they had some demand increases in the feed use of corn and the feed use of wheat also. So that takes a little bit of the bullishness out of it for corn. Uh, Nebraska sharing this 169 bushels per acre in corn and a nation leading 52 bushels per acre in soybeans. You mentioned wheat. Uh, what did you see in wheat today? Any surprises in wheat? Well, they took a huge change to the spring wheat numbers. They changed those ending stocks dramatically higher. So that's bearish for wheat. It's very bearish for wheat. And it take the overall ending stocks numbers for both the U.S. and the world in wheat um, were slightly bearish. That's not the case for the hard red winter and the soft red winter wheat, particularly because that's where you're going to see that feed wheat coming out of. So that's a little more neutral. But as far as prices go today, the few wheat futures are going down. They're not being motivated by this upward movement in corn and soybeans. Do you do anything different selling for the farmer reading this at home? Should he or she do anything different in their selling strategy uh, as we move uh, forward maybe over the next week or so? Yeah, I have been a seller of soybeans over the past week. And so, you know, like I said, I wasn't expecting this 20 cent move up. And I would still be a seller of them because, like I mentioned, going forward, you're looking at um, a lot of beans coming up from Brazil. In fact, the Brazilian Agriculture Ministry today or yesterday mentioned that they are thinking of increasing their projections also. So um, the USDA did not increase their Brazilian projections yet, but they probably will down the line. So there is some bearishness, I think, still coming down the line for soybeans. For corn, however, I think that the bearishness has mostly passed out, um, passed away. The I believe that the U.S. farmer is probably still pretty long. I'm still holding on to a pretty good chunk of the harvested corn um, because I think that there's reason, this demand reasons are, are there coming down the line for corn. We're not going to see as much of that coming from the southern hemisphere in the next six months. And, you know, furthermore, I think everybody was bearish going into this report. I think all of the bearishness was prior to the report. And now that we've seen it, you know, sell the rumor, buy the fact corn may have some opportunity to correct itself upward from this point forward. Finally, what about 2014? Do you look into 2014 uh, for the 2014 crop, either corn or soybeans, and find any opportunity? Yeah, particularly with the soybeans. You know, there's about a dollar difference between now and the 2014 price. So 
that's probably going to have to come together one way or the other. I believe that it's going to come together with the, the nearby prices going lower, and I'm a little bit bearish on soybeans. But it could be, you know, so 11.53 is what they're offering for November soybean futures now, 4.63 for December corn futures. These are prices where if you really, um, if you really were bearish and had no hope for something bullish going on, you would be willing to lock in some profit here. But I think that these demand factors that we talked about, the feed in corn and the global crushing demand for soybeans, Beans, those are stable enough or perhaps bullish enough that there are opportunities in the next six months, let's say, to look at 2014 like a normal year. You start you know, selling in the spring and making seasonal sales, and that's, that's probably the plan to stick with at this point. 